Most Canadians know that COVID came from China. But aside from that, we don't know a lot about how China is reacting to COVID and how it's impacting their domestic politics. But David Mulroney was Canada's former ambassador to China and a member of the Monk Institute of Public Policy and Debate and joins me right now because he knows. And let's just talk about that because Canadians have this view of China. Well, there's a dictator there and a whole bunch of party people around him and they're all powerful. They are all powerful. But I mean, in the face of COVID, is their power sticking? We're seeing that politics uh, has a, a life in China as well as everywhere else. And popular opinion in major cities in China, notably Beijing and Shanghai, is, rage, is, is, is up in arms. People are up in arms over the way China's handled but their But does it po- matter what public opinion it, it matters. It, it matters a lot. This is a political year for China's leader, Xi Jinping. He wants to break the rules and extend his term to be yeah. uh, limitless, essentially. And what's happened is, First time around when COVID first hit, China's response was, was tough, but they managed to keep uh, hospitalizations and deaths down. Their record it was, was very good. What happened then was, of course, the Omicron wave came more recently, and uh, China had relatively low rates of vaccination, and it has a lot of elderly people. China is getting older. It's a growing population. And their own vaccines are not as effective as the vaccines that we have in the West. So what's the impact of that then in the domestic politics of China? Xi Jinping, the leader, felt caught. He had watched what happened in Hong Kong, which was really faced the same conditions. Right. And Hong Kong, a COVID, the Omicron wave ravaged Hong Kong, and it was, it was terrible. So he did the most draconian of lockdowns in, in China. People would wake up, try to get out of their apartment and find that their apartment was sealed. Uh, Some they guys had, saying they were the rifle. They had limited access to fresh food. Uh, people would be taken to the hospital, and then there was footage showing the next crew that would come in would go into the home, pull the dog or the cat out, and beat it to death on the street. So he, he pushed Chinese people to their limits. And for someone who was getting pretty good you know, reviews, if you looked at, at Chinese social media to the extent, and the party does its own polling, that, that's changing. And uh, Xi Jinping is owning China's great, great, uh, you know, unrest, dis, dissatisfaction with, with the COVID policy. So what does that, how does that translate into his power base? If he is owning that and people are upset, does that diminish his, his ultimate power? He has a power base, but he also has uh, around him at the highest levels of the party, people who were not his allies, people who are forced yeah. to come along for the ride and have watched him run roughshod over the rules. So uh, COVID already took the shine off his Olympics, which he'd invested a lot in. Now COVID is generating real unrest, things that we haven't really seen before. There's even unrest on Chinese campuses, which really gets people nervous because they think back to uh, Tiananmen, the Tiananmen massacre. So Xi Jinping is, I don't think he's running scared, but he's not having the year he hoped to have, and he may not be having the year he needs to have. A state of flux, David Mulroney. Thank you very much. Every day, Justin Trudeau tells you, I am making life more affordable for Canadians. And if you believe that, don't watch the station. But if you think that's baloney, as I do, that's a lie, then keep watching for non-biased, non-Prime Minister's Office funded news analysis. To keep us on the air, please donate. PayPal or send a check. 303 Bay Street in Toronto. We'll get it. We need the money.